Good morning. Uh, we're continuing our thoughts on the fruit of the Spirit, and this morning we're going to be thinking about peace. Before we uh, read a passage, let's pray. Father God, we thank you uh, that we can come to you today. We thank you, Lord, for our relationship with you through your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that we can have peace with you and peace in this uh, troubling world in which we live. You promised us that peace, and we pray that as we take some time to read your word and reflect upon it, to meditate upon it, and then to turn to you in prayer, that we might know something of the peace that surpasses all understanding, guarding our hearts and setting us up for this new day. In your name. Amen. Uh, let me just read from Galatians again, um, just to remind ourselves of what we're thinking about. Uh, the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit's work in our life because he lives there within us. His love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Colossians 3 verse 15 tells us to let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful. Very famous verse from Philippians 4 chapter verses 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guide your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 6-7. So the fruit of the Holy Spirit living in us is peace. And when we keep in step with the Holy Spirit, we know that peace. But how can we know that peace? How can we know as a dictionary puts it, that freedom from disturbance and tranquility. Strange and difficult days in which we live, worrying days, can we have this peace? It's a challenge to us, isn't it? Um, we can watch the news and that's, that, that robs us of peace, doesn't it? It worries us and concerns us. We speak to family and friends and others and, and that can be disturbing as well. Um, it's a real challenge, isn't it? And sometimes it's the smallest of things that can upset us and just rob us of that peace and send us over the edge again. It's as if we're, we're plummeting away from a safe place. Can we know peace? Well, the Bible tells us we can. Um, and I want us to think about how we might know that peace today. Um, and maybe we can begin to work towards it in our own lives. So let's consider how we, as Christians, <clears throat> dwelled by the Holy Spirit, can know peace in every and any situation. And the first thing to say, and this is the real foundation of our peace, is that we need to have peace with God. There is no real peace in this world unless we are right with God, no lasting peace, unless we know that our relationship with him is right. Because round whatever corner there is in our lives, there is death and judgment. We can have a wonderfully peaceful life in human terms, but unless we've got peace with God uh, and we're ready to face a judgment, then we really, we don't have any peace at all. We can't have any lasting peace. And in Galatians wants us to know that we can have peace with God. Uh, one of the purposes that Paul writes is, is to bring the, Galatian, the Galatians back to peace. They'd lost their peace in the gospel, their trust in the gospel, and they turned to uh, <clears throat> laws and regulations and rules again to try and find that peace. But they'd lost it. Well, Paul reminds them of what they have in the gospel, what they have in Christ, and how they can have peace with God, because they've been rescued from this present evil age. Uh, they are living by the grace of Christ. That's God's free and undeserved favour to us. And so they don't have to earn their salvation. They can just trust him for it. Uh, they have peace because they're justified by faith. That means that we're declared right in God's sight, not by the works of the law, but by faith, by simply trusting in him. We can have peace because God saves us and brings us into his family. The home, the family should be such a safe and a peaceful place. Uh, and as Christians, we can come near to our Heavenly Father and cry out, Abba, Father. There's that, that close and personal term for God. And so we can know great peace because we can come close to him. 
And the wonderful thing is that this peace then gives us a freedom in our lives so that no longer do we need to be concerned about ourselves and our salvation, our lives, but we're free, we're set free to go and love and serve other people. So firstly, this is where we need to find this peace. This is the foundation of all of our peace as Christians, that we have ultimately got peace with God. Our sins are forgiven. Our salvation is secure. We are in a wonderful relationship with Jesus Christ. We can lose that sometimes, like the Galatians do. We can slip back into it. We can think it depends upon us. Uh, we need to keep coming back and preaching or speaking the gospel to ourselves and reminding ourselves that this is what Jesus has done for us and we're to enjoy it. We're to stop trying to do it ourselves and to put our trust in him and to give thanks for that as well. It's interesting, isn't it? In two of the readings uh, that we read this morning about peace, in Colossians and Philippians, they both speak about giving thanks. So let's give thanks to God for our salvation. Well, secondly, we're to let this peace rule in our hearts and to guard our hearts, as those two readings said in Colossians and Philippians, to let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts and to let it guard our hearts. So we're to stop trying and we're to let him do it. Despite all of our efforts and all of our intents to ensure our happiness, we spend, spend a lot of money on insurance, don't we? Making sure we're protected and we're guarded. Ultimately, we can't keep ourselves from all trouble. But if we fix our hearts and our minds on things above, as in Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 4 says, then we can start to know this peace of God that surpasses understanding, that we, we can let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. Because in this world, we will always have trouble. And so we're to fix our hearts and our minds on things above. We fix them on God. I'm reading a fantastic book called Incomparable that takes us into the character of God. And I encourage you to meditate upon who God is. God is our creator, our sustainer. He's incomparable. He's good. He's true. He's loving. He's unchangeable. He's faithful. He's strong. He is our shepherd. He's peace and salvation. He's our healer, our provider. He's our ever-present help. And, and this book goes on and on and on. And the Bible keeps telling us more about who God is. And as we fix our hearts and our minds on him, <clears throat> we can know peace. It's as if as we do so, he builds a garrison around our hearts. Uh, strong walls that stop the trouble coming along because we have him. I love the way the Amplified Bible amplifies Philippians verses 4. In six to seven, let me read it to you. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition, definite requests, with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. And God's peace shall be yours, that tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ. And so, fearing nothing from God and being content with its earthly loss of whatever source that is. That peace, which transcends all understanding, shall garrison and mount guard over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So as we stop fretting, as we turn our hearts to God and give thanks to him, as we remember his salvation <clears throat> and all he has done for us and all he has promised, it's like a garrison is built around our hearts so that when trouble comes, he can't penetrate and that we have this peace that transcends all understanding. If you prefer a less military picture, here's another picture that came to mind as I thought about that dictionary definition of freedom of disturbance and tranquility. I, I thought of a, of a, a lake, a lake in the Lake District uh, with the tall, strong mountains that surround it. And this lake was like a, like a mill pond. It was just still and quiet as it was sheltered by the tall and strong, immovable mountains that are around it. And I thought about how our, how, how our heart can be like that, as the, the strong, powerful God that surrounds us. And so our hearts are tranquil and undisturbed. It's not easy, is it, to get that? But Scripture says, let God's peace rule, let him rule in our hearts. That means we've got to deliberately stop fretting 
and stop trying to control and rule our own lives. You know, all of it, all of our worry, all of our concern, Jesus says it doesn't add an hour to our lives. Instead, we're to cast all our cares upon him because he cares for us. This means putting our trust in Jesus. He's handing these concerns and these worries over to him. He knows, he cares, he's our loving father who knows and cares. And then we give thanks. Colossians and Philippians reminds us to give thanks to God. So let me encourage you to take time to give thanks to God. To pause in your day and remember how good God has been. To remember how good God is. To remember um, how wonderful your salvation is. Remember who he is. Remember what he's done, what he's promised. Turn your hearts to him and give thanks. And as you do so, you feel the security of that fortress. You remember what he has done to guard you and protect you. Or, or you feel the strength of the mountains and, uh, in, in the Lake District. I don't know about you, but when I go to places like the Lake District, I just want to give thanks to God uh, for the beauty and the wonder of it. And as you reflect on those mountains, maybe you'll give thanks as well um, for just how good God is. And in doing so, we will learn to trust him and find that peace that surpasses understanding. Well, let's pray uh, for a minute as we reflect upon those things. Father God, we thank you for your peace that you give us. We thank you that you give us peace with you through Jesus Christ. We thank you that we can know our sins forgiven, that we are right in your sight, that we have a home in heaven and that nothing can touch it. So we thank you for the foundation of peace. But Lord, we confess that so often we try and drag bits of our life back. We try and rule and control them when really we need to submit to you. So Lord, we pray that you would help us to do that, help us to trust you, help us to cast our cares before you. And Lord, help us to take time in our busy days, in our stressful days at times, to give thanks and remind ourselves of what you have done for us. Lord, that we might know that peace. Father, we want to pray for another week that we face in lockdown and the stresses and the strains of that. We want to give thanks for all that we have. Uh, that means that this isn't as hard as it could be. We pray for Lord, for those in different countries, in different situations to ours, who are really struggling. We want to thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us, what you've given for us, what you've provided for us uh, to make this more bearable. Father, we want to pray that you'd protect us in our, in our situations, uh, that, uh, uh, that, that we would not be robbed of peace, but that we will continually turn to you and find peace. Help us in our, help us those who are homeschooling, those with families around us all the time. It can be stressful, but Lord, help us to know peace there too. We pray for our government this week as they uh, seek to work out how we're going to move out of lockdown into a new normal. Lord, there are lots of challenging decisions to make, be made. We pray that even in this they may turn to you, but that you give them wisdom and how they might help and lead our country. We pray, Lord, for those who are still suffering with illness or with the pain of losing lost, loved ones or uh, because they're distant from loved ones. We pray you bring them peace as well. Uh, Lord, bring us all uh, a peace as we go through these disturbing times, as things maybe change again in the next week or so, as we face different challenges. Lord, we pray that we may look to you and that we may walk forward with peace. So, Lord God, please help us in all that we do. Um, and be with us today. Help us to be thankful people who draw near to our heavenly loving Father. In Jesus' name. Amen.